Hello everyone, I'm now in the wheelchair accessible vehicle area where I'm joined with Graham who's going to tell us everything there is to know about WAVs. Over to you Graham. Hi Helen, thank you for that lovely introduction. I'm not sure I can tell you everything about WAVs but we'll definitely <laughs> do what we can. Um, so we thought we'd start today with one of the more popular newer vehicles on the scheme, one of yep. our more popular WAVs. This particular one is based on the Ford Grand Connect. Right. It's a vehicle that we count in our small medium section, so one up from small. And this is a slightly longer wheelbase version of the Ford Connect. Really popular on the scheme, nice and small, very equivalent size to a car. Yeah. So the basics, as you can see from the outside, it doesn't look too dissimilar to any car realistically. No, I'm just thinking it would probably fit in a car park as well, would it? It's it will, like, yeah. yeah. I mean, it will fit in most car parks. Oh, I can't right, think brilliant. I'm not going to say all car parks in no. case somebody finds one somewhere. <laughs> but I've never found anything in the small, medium category that doesn't just fit in a stand car. Oh, stand perfect. Car park, which is great. And it's the same basic footprint as a car as well. Maybe a tiny bit longer, but not anything that you'd feel uncomfortable with if you were moving from a car to yeah. a wealth. So the converter's done a really good job here. You can see where they've put in the original bumper, mm -hmm. even though they've had to cut it for part of the conversion. They've put it back in again to try and keep it looking as much as possible like the standard car. So to open it, all you Ooh, do is use stand the, out the way. Hang yeah, on a sec. You really <laughs> shut your head in here before, so we won't do that today. So we just open it with the standard release handle there. Obviously, when you come to close it again, there's a grab handle, which yeah, makes it yeah. a little bit easier. Now, I've not rehearsed this, so this will be a really good test as to oh, how right. easy the ramp is okay. to use. I believe you pull this lever down here and deploy the ramp. Oh, yeah, definitely. And yes, like magic, it worked first time. It is a counterbalance ramp. That sounds fancy. All it means is you're not lifting a dead weight. Right. There are a series of pulleys and very clever levers underneath there, which mean that they take some of the weight for you. It's very easy, therefore, to uh, put the ramp down and bring it back in. Now, it's a good indication here in a lowered floor wav the ones that we were talking about earlier yeah. on how much the converter actually cuts out of the vehicle yeah now, it sounds terribly terribly worrying <laughs> but this would have been the original boot floor this height here so you can see how much they've cut to create that headroom for the wheelchair user yeah for people that might be worried a bit about the fact that that's been chopped out i presume it meets all kind of safety checks and, and everything it does indeed everyone will be uh, relieved to hear on the motability scheme every web that you'll find on there priced up adheres to a standard that the conversion industry uh, were instrumental in setting up actually really uh, an amazing thing for the UK it's called PAS 2012 and it is essentially a set of standards for how you would convert a vehicle right. to make sure that it is done properly yeah. and that there isn't any movement once you cut the floor you use the right materials the ramp isn't too steep yeah. the vehicle's got minimum ground clearance so anyone getting a, a WAV from Motability can be assured that it's going to meet those standards and they don't need to worry about sort of the safety of it exactly right yeah it's a prerequisite only uh, vehicles only webs that have this PAS 2012 standard make it onto the scheme right. if it hasn't got that we won't have it on the scheme okay. and that makes sure that we have minimum uh, quality and like I say this is a standard that thankfully our industry in the UK has put together mm -hmm. and it's really good because it gives us this base level standard for all webs to make sure they are safe and they are comfortable and we're not left with hugely steep ramps mm -hmm. like you know we would have seen in years before yeah <laughs> yeah so inside um, you can see this one hasn't got a carpet what it's got is a non-slip floor yeah again there isn't a right or wrong here some people like carpet some yeah. people like non-slip floor non-slips really easy to clean out carpet you can get a bit dirt and mud mm. and stuff like that on there but with carpet it can sometimes deaden the sound a little bit mm. that's the beauty of there being so many different wabs it's something for everybody um on this one you can see at the front here these uh two restraints i'm gonna go and get one actually if that's all right, all right. yeah So these restraints pull all the way to the bottom of the ramp yep. and attach to the front of the wheelchair. Now they move in and out freely, which is great because you can pull them out and attach them to the chair. When you're ready to start coming in in your chair, you simply push this button in and as you come up the ramp in your chair, the belts tighten but won't come back out again. Okay. So if somebody slipped or it was perhaps wet or something and somebody slipped, the chair wouldn't come back down. So it's a ramp. bit like a seat belt. Exactly. Kind of, yeah. 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 Inertia belt restraints, I think they're called. So these will guide you up as you go into the vehicle. When you're in position, you just stop and pull the wheelchair back just very slightly, just to pull some tension on there. And that will lock down the front of the chair. Now to lock the rear, you use these rear restraint points. They're not attached permanently because you wouldn't want to have to roll over them in your chair no. and you wouldn't want them rattling around. So to put them on, you simply fix them on. I'll say simply and then get it wrong. <laughs> you simply fix them onto these points here. You then turn this round, push this button in, 
and this will come out and fasten onto the rear of the chair. Yeah. To tighten it up, you use these and that will make sure that the chair stays fixed in position. Not only will it make sure you're safe in the event of an accident, but it will also stop the chair moving around when you go around corners, which is very disconcerting if yeah. it ever happens to this, you. This looks a little bit time consuming. Is there anything quicker? There is. So there's uh, an option of an automated tie down system. Right. If you can imagine, what's the easiest way to compare it here? It's about the size of a shoebox lid and it sits on the floor. You then have a pin fitted to the underneath of your wheelchair. And as it goes over the uh, plinth on the floor, it clicks into okay. position. A lot like you see an articulated lorry with its trailer yeah, clicking. Yeah. That will then secure you down in your chair and you don't have to worry about these four point restraint system. Right. Now it is automated, it's electronically powered. Uh, and it does require quite a bit of fitting, so it does come with a cost. Right. Uh, it doesn't come as standard as any, on okay. the, any of the WAVs. But, but it's it something someone, someone could choose if that's Absolutely. what they, you know, maybe they, their partner would struggle to do that or yeah. they just wanted the independence of not having someone doing it, then they could go for that. Exactly, yeah. We see it a lot in our drive from wheelchair or oh, independent yeah, course, uh, yeah. uh, solutions uh, for WAVs, uh, enabling somebody to drive without having to worry about fixing straps down. And like you say, it's a really good point for someone that might be helping that perhaps has got a, a bad back or yeah. can't bend down to put the manual restraints on it's a really good option for them i suppose it relies that you only really using one chair and sometimes people have a manual and a power so but you can you actually fit pins on both oh, so right, if you okay. had a manual and a power or even if you had two powers you could have oh, okay. pins fitted on both usually to work with one oh, system. right okay so that it's, would work yeah it's worth discussing it with one of the installers or the converters just to make sure but you should at least have the option there yeah but i guess people should not just think i won't bother with the restraints i'm only nipping around the corner oh, they should always put them on not. <laughs> yeah no matter how short your trip even if it's raining and you think you really don't fancy putting those restraints on honestly once you get used to using the system i've made it look really clumsy once you get used <laughs> to uh, using the system it will become quite a quick thing for you to right. do once you kind of build confidence and get used yeah, to yeah. using it for the minute or so it might take you to put it on it's not worth the risk even no. if you're just going around the corner at 10 yeah. 20 miles an hour you don't want to take the risk with somebody yeah. sat in a chair in there we've, we've seen the sort of the ramp that you've used you've had to be on top bend down and stuff is there anything that's a bit more like powered that you can like press a button or because again for some people that just wouldn't be possible yeah absolutely i mean even though the counterbalance as we talked about earlier on it's still quite a bit of weight that you have to deal with uh, I think nearly all of the wheelchair accessible vehicle converters now offer an automated ramp in one way or another. Essentially, for the most part, it'll be the same ramp, but just with a powered option, a linear motor that will bring it in and out for you that's on a remote control. So you wouldn't have to bend down. It's all fully automated. Again, they're not fitted as standard, but it is an yeah. option for people. They can become quite expensive depending on the model. But if you're in a situation where that's what you need, definitely it's available for you. Mm. What should someone do if they're thinking, I think a WAV might be the vehicle for me but i'm not really sure just yet what, what would your advice be yeah it's do you know what i've been in the industry so long it's quite easy for me to forget how daunting it can be if you've only ever had a car or you've never thought about a wav you never do think about a wav until you need one i think the thing is just to go into it open-minded it's difficult to know when is the right time to change to a wav we have an awful lot of vehicle adaptations that can help you if you're not quite ready but ultimately the great thing is all of the converters on the Motability Scheme will bring a WAV out to you. Right. So you can get in contact with them and just have a chat. I mean, they're really good at chatting to people on the phone and working out whether A, what they've got is right for you, or B, whether or not you need a WAV yet. They're yeah. not afraid of saying to you, do you know what, maybe it's not quite the right mm. time. If you get to the stage where you really do want to investigate it, they will make sure that the vehicle that they've got should fit you yeah. before they come to see you in your home. But then they'll bring a vehicle to you and you can try it out and see how you get on. Might be the best thing for you or it might not quite be the time to do it yet. Mm. But you're right, it is it is a daunting thing and yeah. it's definitely worth just talking to as many people as you can. Mm. And I noticed that there's a number of converters that can kind of convert the same vehicle. How, should, how do people know, you know which is the one for them? Yeah, again, this is the complexity of it. So you might see, for example, a VW Caddy through one converter and then a VW Caddy through three different ones as well. Yeah they're all going to be slightly different. Every right. converter has their own way of doing things. Generally, you'll see the same basic approach, the lowered floor and the ramp. Some ramps might be two piece ramps that fold up together. Some right. might be a one piece ramp. Some floors might be carpet, some non-slip, but you'll also find differences in the access dimensions. This measurement here is one of the most important uh, right. for making sure that you can go in without having to duck your head. Yeah. That will differ from converter to converter. Okay. The great thing, as we said about home demonstrations, they'll all bring you a vehicle to try. Ideally, you want to have two or three home demonstrations. Yeah. Uh, it can take some time up, but it's so important to get the one that's really right for yeah. you. Yeah. And what would your top tips be for 
buying a WAV. Oh, that's the difficult one. The top <laughs> tips for buying a WAV. Do you know what? It's such a journey to go on when you've never had to think about a WAV. I think just be prepared to put the time in because right. uh, WAVs on the Motability Scheme are a five-year lease. Yeah. And it's really important to make sure that you don't just go for the first one that you see just because you think, well, this is amazing. I'm going to be able to get out in my wheelchair in a yeah. car. Take the time. Take advantage of the home demonstrations. Take as many pictures as you can on the day. Yeah. Because the one thing is with home demonstrations, they might be spread out over a week yeah. or two weeks to see three different vehicles. By the time you see vehicle three, you might have forgotten what vehicle yeah, one looks like. Yeah. Make some notes while you're there. Say what you like. I like the carpet. I like the non-slip floor. The ramp felt a bit heavy. Mm. Write as much as you can down. Take as many pictures as you can. Uh, really think about as well for the wheelchair user. Take pictures of where they're from. Ask them to take a picture of where they're sat. Can they see mm. out the windscreen clearly? Do they feel comfortable in there? Just try and get as much information as you can together. And then once you've had the demonstrations, really sit down and think about what was the right one for you. Lovely. That's all been really helpful. Thanks for that, Graham. No problem. Thank you. But don't go anywhere because joining us at three o'clock on the stage is Lisa Jones from Motability, the charity, and she'll be talking about applying for grants. So join us there at three and then she'll be in the studio with me at half past three. See you later.